My name is Min Seok Song. I'm from United University of Korea. Today I'm going to talk about the energy issue in video servers. And the title of my talk is Data Free Fetching to Reduce Energy Use by Heterogeneous Disk Array in Video Servers. And this slide shows the outline I would like to talk about today. I first introduce the brief background of our work. Then I'm going to propose a main idea of our scheme. To apply this main idea to a real video server, we have to tackle several issues. For this purpose, I formulate the optimization problem. To that problem, I'm going to propose several algorithms. Finally, I'm going to talk about the experimental result and conclude my talk with a brief summary of our contribution. Today, Energy problem for learning server receive a lot of attention from research communities as well as industries for the following three reasons. First, it introduced a biggest economic problem to the service provider. For example, it is known that up to 25% of total cost of ownership is due to high electricity bills. What is worse? Data then need to be stored increased tremendously recently, so the management cost will increase. Second, energy problem may introduce the reliability problem to the system. Actually, energy consumption always results in heat and high temperature, which degrade system reliability. For example, 15 degrees Celsius above ambient doubles the failure rate of a disk. What is worse? Cooling si we have to install cooling system to reduce, to decrease the heat. But the cooling system itself adds significantly to the power cost of data center. Finally, energy problem may introduce environment issues. So what is the biggest energy consumer in server? There are a lot of components in server. Among them, disk consume a lot of power. For example, energy user Liu suggested that disk accounts for about 27% of the total power. The large disk array in some systems use more energy than all other components put together. Moreover, faster disk will increase the power consumption of disk, but recently, disk become faster. In addition, data stored on the server increased tremendously recently. So we have to reduce this kind of consumption in order to reduce the power management cost in a server. How about video servers? Actually, listen to a lot of applications use video servers. So large server infrastructure are needed for video server because of, of the following three reasons. First, a lot of clients access video server concurrently. For example, it has been estimated that over 4 billion YouTube videos are viewed at each day. In addition, the amount of video data stored increased greatly. For example, 72 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute. And these two characteristics result in heterogeneous disk array because new disk must be added to serve increasing number of contents. In addition, sometimes disk fail. So all the disk must be replaced by new disk. So far, I have discussed the background of our work. So we have to, it is very important to reduce disk power consumption in video server using heterogeneous disk. And this is the main objective of our work. So now I'm going to talk about our scheme that deals with these issues. So how can we reduce this kind of energy consumption in video server? For this purpose, disk manufacturers provide several power modes, which can be classified into active, seek, idle, and standby mode. Among them, in the standby mode, the disk stops spinning completely and requires much less energy than other modes. So it is very important to extend the length of time in which disk stays in standby mode in order to reduce disk energy consumption. But 
the problem is that it is almost impossible to allow disk to enter standby mode because it may take 10, between 10 or 20 seconds to return from standby to active mode. However, video server must transmit data continuously. So it is almost impossible to allow disk enter standby mode. So how can you reduce disk energy consumption in video server? For this, sub, for, for this purpose, we have examined the real power consumption of 25 disks. And this graph shows how much energy consumed in each power mode. From this picture, we clearly see that SIG power, SIG operation required the most energy. For example, we found that average SIG power is about 12 watt, whereas average idle power about 6.7 watt. And this graph clearly shows that we have to reduce SIG energy consumption in order to reduce total energy consumption. In addition, SIG time is the most dominant part of total disk time. So SIG energy plays a great role in disk power consumption. Now let me explain how we tackle, how we reduce SIG energy consumption. For this purpose, I'm going to now, I'm, I'm now, I'm now presenting the system model for our video servers. Basically, a video server must support periodic data retriever. For example, to support streaming of 3 megabits of video, a server needs to read 3 megabit of data every second. In addition, a video server inherently supports a lot of concurrence simultaneously. So from this observation, we can divide the timeline into several rounds, and each round it, in each round, a video data is transmitted for every client in a periodic fashion, as, like, as shown in this picture. So now let me move on to our idea. How can you reduce the number of SIG operations? Conventional, we basically we use prefetching technique to reduce the number of SIG operations. This means that using a single SIG operation, we prefetch future data in advance, which definitely reduces the number of SIG operations. Now let me show two pictures. The picture above shows a convention, how conventional approach works. As it can be seen, in each round, the disk, we have the video server must seek and lead data from the disk. But in the second picture, we can see that we, the disk of video server, prefetch future data in advance, resulting in the idle time. So let, let me, now let me summarize the benefit of seek, benefit of prefetching operation. Prefetching operation results in less seek, which increase the idle time, and which definitely reduce the disk power consumption needed for SIG operations. But to apply the prepatching technique to our video server, we have to tackle several, several issues. First, we have only limited buffer size, limited memory size. But prepatching operation obviously require a lot of buffer space because it holds future data in memory space. Second, as I mentioned earlier, recent video server is based on heterogeneous disk as well as heterogeneous videos. We have to tackle these issues. And this is the main idea, main topic I would like to talk about today. So as I mentioned, there is an obvious trade-off between memory size and disk power consumption because pre-patching operation require a lot of buffer space which reduces disk power consumption. In addition, prefetching operation must be performed evenly ac across each period. For this explanation, I'm, going, I'm now showing an example of prefetching operation. 
Suppose that the free fetching happens in the first and fifth rounds. In the first, first round, the amount of data in buffer becomes at its maximum. But as data is transmitted to the clients, the data in the buffer gradually decreases, as it can be seen here. And in the fifth round, the buffer size becomes maximum two, but it gradually decreases, as it can be seen here. And this example clearly shows that prefetching concentration must be avoided because it may cause a significant buffer size. So prefetching operation must be performed evenly across each period. And this is the main topic I would like to talk about today. In addition, as I mentioned, the recent video server is based on heterogeneous disks and videos. So how this affect this energy con to, to ex explain how this affect this energy consumption, let me take an, an example of three disk, two disk type, and two video streams. In this scenario, we have calculated buffer requirement as well as amount of energy saving that can be obtained by allowing free fetching operations. And in this picture, we can clearly see is if free fetching for only one stream is allowed, we need to allow free fetching operation of three megabit video stream that access data on disk type A because it has the smallest buffer requirement, but but I mean, but it saves the most energy consumption. So we have to tackle these two issues. So to summarize, now let me formulate the optimization problem. To establish the optimization problem, for every free fetching of each stream, we calculate the buffer size during each round. We calculated the amount of disk energy saved by allowing free fetching. Based on this, we formulate the problem, optimization problem, then maximize the amount of disk energy saved while keeping buffer requirement below the buffer size. To explain this optimization problem, I now am going to introduce the concept of a prefetching window. What is the pre concept of the what is the prefetching window? Prefetching window means the number of four coming rounds for which data is prefetched. Basically, we limit the maximum prefetching window size to NP and allowable window size at the device of MP. So for example, if MP is equal to eight, the feasible window size is one, two, four, eight. Now let me explain how prefetching window affects the disk seek operations. Suppose that, window size, suppose that the window size is one. If the window size is one, data must be led in each period. Actually, this corresponds to the conventional approach. If the window size is two, we have to lead data every second round. If window size is four, we need to lead data every fourth round. This means that in the first round, future data for three rounds must be prefetched, as can be seen here. If the window size is eight, we have to prefetch future seven rounds. Definitely, window size of eight needs the most buffer size, but it reduces, it, 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 it obtains the most power saving. In addition, if the prefetching window size is K, then there are K cases of data prefetching operation. For example, suppose that the window size is four. And to support the window size is four, we can have four cases as can be seen here. So you have to select one cases among these four cases with the aim of balancing the buffer size over each round. Now let me calculate buffer requirement. When the prefetching round have been chosen, the same pattern of prefetching operation repeats every MP round. So you only need to examine buffer requirement between 
a beginning of a new sequence of MP rounds and the end of a new sequence of MP round. And the buffer requirement during nth round can be calculated as follows. Now let me explain how this equation can be established in the next slide. And this equation, using this equation, we can obtain the result as can be seen in this table. Suppose that the window size is 4, then prefetching operation happens in round R. And in round R, the buffer becomes maximum, as can be seen here. As I mentioned earlier, because data is transmitted to, to the client, the buffer size gradually decreases, as can be seen here. And this is the value of VIJKN. But in round, round R4, R plus 4, data prefetching happens again. So the buffer becomes maximum and gradually decreases the buffer size, as you can be seen here. And this equation shows how this operation works. Now let me calculate energy requirement for prefetching. Actually, energy saved by prefetching depends on the window size. In addition, difference between seek and idle power of the disk primarily affect the amount of the energy saving. Based on this, we have derived equation that calculate the energy saving, the amount of energy saving. And this equation shows how the amount of energy saving can be achieved. The left term represents the difference of C counts. In, the, in this term, Vj represents prefetching window size. And the right term represents the difference between seek and idle power. So increasing prefetching window size definitely increases the amount of energy, the amount of energy that can be saved here. From these calculations of buffer size and energy requirement, now I'm formulate the optimization problem called prefetch determination problem. For every client, for each client, we have to find a pair of window size and the location of prefetch round that maximize total amount of energy saved while satisfying the following condition. In each round, the buffer requirement must be less than or equal to the buffer size provided by the systems. And you have to examine a total MP round, as I mentioned earlier. And this problem is basically MPR'd because it, it has a special case of multiple choice, multiple dimensional knapsack problem. And the number of dimensions is NP. So it is almost hard to drive the optimal solution using, within a reasonable time range. So we provide a heuristic algorithm for this problem called prefetching selection algorithm. Basically, you use a greedy technique to derive our solution. So we have defined parameters for greedy heuristic algorithm called QIJ. The numerator represents the amount of energy saved, while the denominator represents difference in maximum buffer requirement between window size of J and window size of 1. And we have defined these parameters for each client and for each window size. Then basically we select the candidate client I with the highest value of QIJ because a higher value of QIJ saves more energy for a given buffer size, as you can see in this equation. And we try to increase the window size index of client I to J. And this is the basic principle of our heuristic algorithm, which uses a greedy technique. And based on this, we have developed a prefetching selection algorithm, which is divided into two phases, initialization phase and selection phase. In the initialization phase, for all clients selected window size index 
and the prefetching round index are initialized to one, which need the smallest buffer requirement, but highest energy consumption. But we have spare buffer space, so we have to increase the window size index. So window size for the selected client are increased to reduce energy consumption, as it can be seen here. And set of prefetching round is chosen to balance the buffer requirement across rounds. And the details can be described as here. And we have developed several heuristics called NP, which is no prefetching technique, and other heuristics to the PDF, the GE and GB. Both techniques also use a greedy approaches but the parameters are different, as can be seen here. And when you execute the algorithm, basically when a client requests or closes a video stream, PSA needs to be learned to accommodate the change in this load. For example, suppose the client I arrived here, then a streaming for client I start here, but until a new sequence of MP rounds starts, the window size is automatically set to 1. But here, a new prefetching window size can be used, as it can be seen here. And this slide shows the energy consumption values of our schemes. So we have calculated SIG energy, active energy, idle energy. Now let me move on to the experimental result. We did simulation to examine how our scheme works. And number of heterogeneous is set to 10, and we have used the measured foul value described in this website. And two, we also have, have our video characteristics as follows. And we, to reflect the dynamic access pattern of a video server, we model the client ar arrival as follows. Definitely, the access probability follows the zip distribution. We first examine how our algorithm is close to the optimal value. For this purpose, we learned LP solve problem. And from this, th this table shows how the, power, the, the difference in power saving between PSA and the optimal solution and you can clearly see in this table, our heuristic algorithm is very close to the optimum. In addition, we have also examined power values against prefetching buffer size. If the prefetching buffer size is high, then the difference between our scheme and no prefetching scheme is the maximum. And you can see that if the buffer size is small, the difference in power saving between our scheme and two heuristic algorithms is relatively high. We also examined power value against the number of disks. Actually, the number of disks determines the workload imposed on the server. And as can be seen here, the number of disks affects energy consumption too. And this graph can be described using uh, this table. A decrease in the utilization is attributable to the reduction of the seek time, which decreases power consumption. So actually, we, our scheme basically reduces the disk bandwidth utilization, which reduces energy consumption needed for SIG operation, which reduces total energy consumption. We also examined how the prefetching window size affect disk energy consumption. And this graph shows the value of power against MP values. As prefetching window size increases, the energy gap between PSA and other schemes increases too, as it can be seen here. Now let me summarize our scheme. We propose data prefetching scheme for video server with heterogeneous disk. With the XE aim of maximize, the objective of our scheme is the 
maxima minimizing power consumption while making use of buffer space effectively. And simulation results indicate that our algorithm provides near optimal solution to seek time power minimization. In addition, when the buffer size is small, the energy gap between PSA, which is our algorithm, and other heuristic algorithms is high. And increasing the buffer size reduces the number of six and saves more energy as we expected. And finally, as the free patching window size increases, the energy gap between PSA and other scheme also increases. And these are results from our simulations. We are currently preparing for real power measurement. And this picture shows the measurement setup of our scheme. Thank you for your attention. Now let me finish our presentation. Just a moment. We'll hold on. Um, w what would happen? Okay. What would happen when your clients jump back and forth within a video? So you use the, the the scrolling button to jump forward or backward in your video. What does what happens to your prefetching algorithm? Actually, we didn't. Uh, we haven't considered that issues now. But uh, when the client, I mean, reposition I mean, their, I mean, their the location of a video, uh, we have to consider that request as a new stream in this scenario. So free fetching algorithm must be executed at that time. I have a similar question. So you yeah. are now assuming that you have a, a quite rigid round system that, yeah. that in every round you know in advance uh, what should happen yeah uh, which may be true from some very specific uh, video servers but are you sure that it is realistic to assume that it is that is valid is a valid assumption in general and then maybe different discrete threads can may also come which are not related to the videos so could you could you Tell me the point of view. So uh, I think that that's yeah. a very, very, very strong uh, pre-assumption. Which, yeah, which you o o and further, it may also happen that on the same disk there are some different requests as well. Yeah. So you're not pure. So, uh, so this will only work for a very specific kind of video service. Yeah, I mean, a stable I mean, video workload, maybe. Yeah. Stable video workload, maybe. I mean, yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. So this is actually, I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of putting out this as a more of a, of, a, of a thought question for the room or just, uh, you know, to, to kind of follow up on some of this. But uh, uh, in terms of the energy aware streaming and, and, and these kinds of things, um, I wonder what, uh, whether or not we really need to investigate uh, where the actual meat, in, I mean, like whether, you know, where the actual energy expenditure is coming from, right? Because, for example, like, you know, I have certainly have the energy of the video server, but I also have the energy of all the transmission and the routers between, right? So which is the biggest component? Is it the transmission energy or is it the disk energy? Because if the disk energy is only, let's say, 5% of yeah, the end-to-end -end energy of actually delivering the video, then optimizing the disk energy isn't necessarily like the, uh, mm -hmm. the the biggest part of the problem, and I'm not sure we really thought of. Oh, and then and other things like CDN misses, right? I mean, if 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 Akamai spends time caching the wrong video at some CDN cache halfway around the world and nobody watches it, right? All that energy, like, you know, just avoiding that one cache miss, like uh, that one cache operation, could be worth all of the optimizations we ever mm -hmm. make. On, on, on energy disk, right? And so, uh, and so I think, uh, I think you know, you know, I've seen a lot of these papers attacking the energy problem in different parts of the pipeline, which is great because that's where we start. But I think we need to start to take a holistic view to see whether or not, you know, where the biggest piece of the pie is coming from and, you know, in, in, order, to, in order to kind of tack, tackle it globally.
I think one thing you didn't mention is also the client because they're becoming more and more mobile and you want to make sure that your battery doesn't die by doing something sooner. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, but but I think you want to look at the end to end. So you can maybe do something nicely energy efficient on your server that screws maybe up the energy consumption at the client. So so that's the thing. So uh, this study seems to be mostly related about uh, disk, uh, the you know the conventional uh, rotational disk-based uh, storage, uh, but more and more we are putting flash-based uh, disks in our video servers, uh, and uh, all this you know seek time or you know idle time, uh, those issues will just disappear, um, and uh, more importantly, uh, in the flash domain. The, the critical point is the lifetime of the flash uh, storage. Um, you cannot just uh, you know, uh, cache and then uh, evict content mm. from the flash uh, mm. continuously because there are a certain of number of times you can write to the flash disk. And these, these disks are still very expensive. Uh, for example, on a typical video server, we are talking about 30 terabytes of storage. Uh, I mean, in today's pricing, that's a lot of money. And the service providers, you know, the main customers for these uh, servers, uh, they don't want to replace the storage every three to five years. Um, so, uh, I mean, to me, uh, and those are really power efficient. So to me, the real problem is how you actually optimize the caching and prefetch prefetching algorithms as opposed to, um, you know, energy efficiency and that kind of stuff. So maybe that could be a new direction for your uh, yeah, further research. Yeah. That's a good question. And actually, I mean, we are considering use the use of the SSD as a cache. So, and how use of SSD may affect uh, this energy consumption too. So, 